Hello, this is Michael McCarthy, and in this video I wanted to go over setting up some camera shots with state sets and using a simple way that is gives you a little bit of flexibility as far as your timeline and seeing the camera shots here. So I have this scene that ships with Max with uh, this character, and we're going to take this character and uh, just set up a couple of camera shots for them. So I'm going to hide those controllers for right now, and I'm just going to grab all these cameras. I'll pop them on a quick layer and I'm also going to hide those for the moment and I'll go back here. So I'm going to just launch state sets so I'll go over to the rendering menu and choose manage state sets and that'll kind of pop up. What I want to do is just create three shots. So I'm going to create my three shots here. Name this shot one, shot two, and shot Three. And what I'm going to do is actually in the base state or the just the 3ds Max scene, I'm going to go over here and I'm going to set it to render the active time segment. So no matter when you click render, it's always going to render the active time segment, uh, which is going to work out pretty well for us. And I'm just going to go into uh, record shot one. And for shot one, what I like to do is grab a camera and actually I think it's going to be uh, camera two. So this would be a good camera for me to kind of see what's going on and I'm going to go and say yeah you know between zero and thirty is going to be my camera shot. So instead of actually setting this in the render dialog because I'm using active time segment uh, I'm going to use state sets to record uh, the active time segment. So I'm just going to drag this out and set that end frame to thirty and that's all recorded there. So now if I just stop recording when I kind of pop back I can press play see it goes through the whole thing uh, or if I hop in here you can see it switches to that cam and we just have that first shot there. So I'm going to just do this for the rest of them. I'm going to go in here and uh, I'm going to choose camera 3 and this camera I'm going to set the uh, in point or the start frame to frame uh, 30 or 31 actually. We'll decide I think the out maybe around 90 or 95. So we'll set that to 95. Just do a quick play to see if we like that shot. Yeah, it looks alright for right now. We'll click off of that. So now we can again click through our shots. We can press play. And lastly, I'll go to this one and just set this up as the final camera, which is actually the original camera from the scene. And I'm going to go here and just set that start time to 96. And the end time will be all the way through there. Uh, I'll put this back at the beginning uh, because the uh, position of the timeline is also tracked. Like if we go here, you can see that. Uh, that was right there so what we'll do is just click on record and make sure that that's at the beginning so that every time we go to a shot it's at the first frame for where we want it to be and each one we can just kind of go and look through and see how our shots played out. So here's our first shot, here's our second shot, and there's our third. So it helps us get a pretty good idea in the viewport of what our uh, shots are. Now if we want we can just go up to states and say render all states and it'll render through and because we've used the active time segment here it's going to render all of our frames and that means we can kind of go in here I'll choose save file and this is just in the base state um, of Mac so this isn't particular to any state they'll just all save out to this folder so I'll go into state cam and choose here. So we'll just go in and say uh, state cam dot TGA. We'll save that out uh, right there and basically every state is going to use this uh, path in order to save out but because it's a camera sequence we'll just get all of them for uh, a quick preview and uh, that way we can close this out. We can say states render all states and this little uh, rendering dialog for state sets will come up. If you need to cancel all the states as they go through, uh, you can just cancel this and it will cancel uh, all of them as opposed to using the cancel on the render dialog. 
So these will go through. Uh, we'll keep looking at this until at least we switch over. And uh, you can see that we'll get to frame 30. And it'll move to the next frame there, uh, the next state, and render that out. And uh, they should all be named appropriately too. Okay, so now that we're finished rendering, uh, we'll just cruise up to rendering and choose compare media in RAM player. We'll open up that file sequence so we can go into state cam, grab the first one, make sure a sequence is set up here. And that'll just load into RAM, which we can play back and see all of our camera changes pretty quickly. So hopefully that's a fairly fast and easy way to uh, do camera shot setups and previews for you. Another thing you can do, because of course uh, none of this is really tied to the render output in any way, these are just all of our shots and the time sequences we want, uh, we can just kind of go in, again, not in a state, just in the 3DS Max scene, and uh, we can change our renderer and do all sorts of stuff. So if I go into Assign Renderer, we can do a, a maybe quicker preview with something like Quicksilver. So we'll save this out as uh, cam, state cam B. And under renderer, let's just choose time. I'll say I want this to be pretty quick. Uh, we'll just bring it down to two seconds a frame. I think that'll be pretty good for our quick Quicksilver render. And we'll go into states, say render all states. So this will compile the shaders. And we'll just get a quick two second of frame set up here with Quicksilver. Now Quicksilver has gone through and uh, blazed through those frames pretty quickly. We'll just go back into the RAM player and we'll load up that sequence. So I'll go in here, state cam B, we'll open that up. And here we can have a fast preview uh, of our animation, our camera shots. Um, if we wanted it to happen a little bit quicker with Quicksilver. So I hope this helps you set up your camera shots and preview animations in 3ds Max and it can help you to more interactively view what's going to happen with your camera shots. Thank you very much.